today's topic is going to be around uh, supply and demand planning and, and forecasting. Really exciting topic and being able to do all of this with inside of Power BI and Excel. So before we begin, I wanted to cover just a few slides, not going to bore anyone to death with PowerPoint today, but really to set the foundation of the technology and the effective roadblocks that Actaris is helping solve within familiar tools like Power BI and Excel. Being able to rely on your data is probably the biggest part and the, and the biggest challenge that people have in, in today's world is that there's a lot of information that's going to that's in dif disparate systems. So we need to be able to consolidate all that information into one place, which is another uh, topic of a discussion later on, which is leveraging AI. And the only ability to leverage AI effectively is to make sure that all of your data is reliable and that you actually have trust in your data to make those strategic business decisions. We're going to talk about how we've integrated supply and demand planning and forecasting all with inside of Power BI. As most of you probably know today, Power BI is more of an output mechanism. It allows you to see your data in different ways. But what it doesn't allow you to do is enter in data. And that's the most important component in the forecasting process is being able to make sure that you can enter your data, provide assumptions, and in real time, see those changes based on those assumptions within your output visuals. And then we'll go right into an Actaris demonstration where you'll see how you entering in data into Power BI and automatically adjusting all the output visuals and KPIs that you have within that framework. So as a way of introduction, my name is Mike Zach. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Actaris. I've been around and worked in the fintech space for uh, a majority of my career. I uh, started off at a company called G Treasury, which was a treasure management technology, then moved over to a company called Hazeltree, which was a treasury technology for private equity and hedge funds. And then about two years ago came to Actaris because it real, was really excited about what they were doing. And I believe that it's revolutionizing the software as a service industry, where a lot of firms today buy pointed applications. And what we're doing is we're repurposing existing technology and creating a multi-purpose tool within the organization. Uh, some fun facts about me, I really enjoy uh, hiking. I live in Las Vegas. Uh, many of you have probably have been to Vegas and believe me, three years ago, I didn't believe myself that I would live in Vegas, but it's absolutely beautiful here outside of the strip. It's like Times Square. I don't live in I don't live on the strip. I live outside of it. And I love golfing. Golf can golf here year round. I grew up in Chicago, so I, I I don't take that for granted at all. And I also love to travel. Been to over about 45 countries now. Just was at in Japan and the Philippines uh, earlier last year. So just really excited to uh, travel and get to see multiple people and multiple customers around the world. So let's start with just navigating the roadblocks of effective forecasting. You know, being able to obtain information from various teams quickly is extremely important. Typically, what we see when we're working with organizations is that they're asking team members to fill out Excel spreadsheets, and then someone has to consolidate those spreadsheets. And by the time it gets to someone to actually start analyzing and making impactful decisions, it's already stale. So giving them a tool to allow them to enter data directly into an interface that they're already familiar with, Excel and Power BI being the, those two options, you'll be able to have that data synchronized cohesively across the organization. So you're not working off of stale data, you're working off of real-time data. And when you have information that's flowing, flowing freely across the organization, it's easier to step, set the strategic vision of the business. When you have inventory levels that are starting to approach on near zero, you want to be able to get to a point where you can act on that and take action. So what's great about in insights and analytics is that it allows you to see that data, but the next kind of component and the push forward is to be able to take action on that. So being able to manage all of your inventory levels and make actionable insights off of that inventory data. Now, when we think about data in general, it has to be reliable. If we don't trust the data, we're just gonna go back to our normal processes. And what leads to having an accurate uh, component of your data is the fact that we have to get visibility across the organization and we need to consolidate that information quickly. It's not going to different spreadsheets, it's actually entering this into a structured database 
where everyone's working off of a single source of truth. And this is not just finance, sales, and operations data. This is all data across the organization. Every single data point that gets produced by the business is important in the planning process. We're all trying to prepare for the future, especially in an uncertain world. So every data point that exists is important or plays an important role on the decision-making criteria. And being able to automate that entire process, and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, in use cases that everyone can bring up today and how they're actually getting their data or how long it takes them just to get that data and then analyze it and make sure that they can trust it before they present it to the next person within the organization. And Actaris is here to let everyone know that we actually help with this entire process from the start, which is the aggregation of all that data, to the middle, which is the optimization. When you have a lot of information like sales or operations or inventory, or whatever uh, you have, you wanna be able to optimize that. Because when you have sales and finance data as an example, that's like speaking two different languages. And when you bring that together, it's not gonna make a lot of sense unless you connect that. So Actaris helps with the optimization process and then ultimately giving the users a very flexible and tailored tool to accommodate a lot of business needs. Once you have all of your data in that single source of truth, we need to model it. So that's the optimization process that I was just speaking to earlier. Being able to go beyond uh, the traditional single siloed models into a multi-dimensional model that you can actually play around with data and see the impact that it has in different departments. If I hire, or if I make a change within my inventory, I need that to ultimately reflect within the finance model. So having these teams, these models simultaneously working together to tell a complete story and that all happening within real time allows us to prepare for the future in a better way. Now, when we think about just integrating with your source systems, one of the biggest components uh, that is used in today's world is Power BI. Power BI acts as almost a, a single source of truth because it can pull data from different places. Now, what you do, what a lot of our clients uh, fear is though, is that all of their data is sitting inside of a Power BI report, just like it's sitting inside of an Excel report. So being able to put an infrastructure behind that or a database behind that where it reads from, either a data warehouse or just a, a traditional SQL database, having that structure is important for scalability purposes. And Excel is not going away. There's still a billion users that are on Excel and compared to Power BI, which is you know, roughly about 8 million people now, and that's growing fast. There's still a wide gap between Excel and Power BI. Uh, so Excel, Excel is still gonna be leveraged across the organization being a flexible tool and a tool of choice. And we wanna be able to make sure that we're leveraging this flexible tool. So with our technology, you can still continue to use Excel and Power BI to make changes and modifications to your data set. Instead of storing the data, however, in these tools, we're storing it all within a structured database, and these tools are just pointing to that database and bringing the data to life. Now, with Power BI and Excel, when you change data, well, I should, I'll start with Excel, actually. When you change data in Excel, you're changing it within that Excel report. It's not cascading to all these other Excel reports that you may have across the organization, most likely. Whereas the technology that you're gonna to see today, when you actually make a change within Excel and you commit those changes, it's writing that data back to a database where all other reports that are connected to that specific data point will instantly be updated. So that goes back to that single source of truth. Now let's talk about Power BI. Power BI is a great tool to analyze data or visualize data but it doesn't allow you to change that data. So with our technology, we're not only turning Excel into a data entry facility back to a single source of truth, but also Power BI. So when we go into today's demonstration, you're actually going to see me make changes within Power BI and have that automatically update and recalculate all the different metrics that are important to me. And then last but not least, we have the modeler. Being able to model all of your data together ERP systems, sales systems, inventory systems, all of these things, all these systems are gonna to come together into the single source of truth, and we need to connect all of that information so we can tell a complete story. So I don't wanna bore everyone to death with PowerPoint because everyone's been very patient uh, with me. So I wanna go ahead and skip over the remaining slides that I have and jump right into a product demonstration. 
And today we're gonna have two different product demonstrations. The first one is gonna showcase the actual write back capability within Power BI. And the second is gonna give you a more of a traditional supply and demand planning infrastructure, and then ultimately getting to a point of being able to also do this with an Excel, PowerPoint, and Teams. This, this technology works across all of your Microsoft, all your Microsoft products that you're leveraging today. So here we have a Power BI report. If I go ahead and click on the edit mode, this is a traditional Power BI report. There's nothing different about my Power BI report versus your Power BI report. What I've done is I've downloaded these teal color visuals, which are the Actera's input visuals directly from the Microsoft App Source. Uh, we do have some output visuals to bring information to life, which I'll go into a little bit later. But the objective here is that you can download all of our visuals directly in the Microsoft ecosystem through, or excuse me, through the Microsoft ecosystem. I'm going to go into read only and also full screen and start with a very basic revenue analysis example. Now, this could be revenue, this could be inventory, this could be supply, this could be demand, this could be any type of data that you want to present in Power BI. What we're going to do is we're going to simulate uh, what we believe our revenue is going to be based on the quantity of the products that we're going to sell, as well as the price that we're going to sell those, those um, assets at. So here we have quantity by product, price by product, and revenue by product. These are all input visuals that we'll demonstrate here in just a moment. Over on the left, we have all of our output visuals. So these are the KPIs that are important to this analysis. We're looking at what our total revenues are, what the total quantity is by piece across all of our different uh, product SKUs, and then the average price per piece. And then being able to look at that over a period of time, what our revenue is, as well as what our performance uh, compared to another scenario, which leads me over to the far left, which is the actual slicers of this report. Think of these as like filters. How do I want to dynamically filter this report down? If I want to look at my budget versus my plan, I can I can set that up if I wanted to. Now what's going to be different here is simply by clicking on this edit button in the upper left hand corner of the first input visual within Power BI called the Actaris matrix visual, which has a list of all of our different products that we're analyzing. I'm gonna make a few changes in January. So here we have 45, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 50. Here we have 38, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 44. And here I have 41, and I wanna go ahead and just increase this by 10% and typing in a shortcut of I 10%. So it's going to recalculate those numbers. Now, once I enter in all those numbers and I hit that save button, this is what's triggering a write back to that SQL database and it's instantly going to update. So this 1.2 million is now going to change to one point, well, probably didn't increase it enough to change it dramatically, but the pieces increase and the average total cost increase. Maybe we can make a little bit more of a dramatic change here. Let's say we wanna go from 35 to 75, 25 to 50, and 39 to 67. So again, we're making modifications in different ways. We can go ahead and hit save. This is once again, triggering a write back to that SQL database and instantly refreshing all the visualizations. So it went from 1.2 to 1.3, 800 pieces now to 900 pieces, and then the average cost. So what you're doing is you're changing data. Now we're not changing actual data. The actual data is coming from the source systems and we're using that as a benchmark but that is always locked down. So no changes to actuals are happening. And we're also not writing back to your source system. We're writing back to a staging layer. So we brought in all this information and we're now interacting with that information in different ways. We can change product level information. We can change price. So here what we can say is, well, this particular product SKU is no longer gonna be $1,400. It's actually gonna be $1,750. And so I can use a function called R, which is going to write that value to the end of that period. And if you forget any of these shortcuts, there is a little shortcut option here in the upper right-hand corner, which will give you the additional information. So when I go ahead and click save, this is going to write all of these values that I just changed back to the database. And once again, you're gonna see all of your KPIs 
change in real time. So it's extremely flexible. And what this is also doing is it's recalculating the total revenue. So let me show you one more time. I'm gonna change this from 50, oops, go ahead and change this from 50 to 55, 49, and let's maybe do 56. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna increase the quantity across this product category. It's gonna multiply by price. So this 309 here is going to change as total revenue. So it went from 309 to 353. So it's all about data input affecting your outputs so that way you can make these strategic business decisions and ultimately prepare for the future. Now, this is just one use case. You can still leverage different slicers if you only want to do this for one product line for one period of time. A uh, lot of different capabilities that you have with this technology. I'm going to move on to the next report, which is around quantity analysis. Uh, so earlier I was uh, performing a demo. So I'm actually going to just delete one of these scenarios real quick. So you have the existing scenarios that you're leveraging. So normal scenarios like my forecast, my budget, my plan, my rolling forecast, actuals could be an example here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one, uh, which was called Mike. And I'm going to go ahead and just refresh. And you'll notice how Mike has now disappeared from my modeled scenarios over on the left-hand side. And if I go and I select now my budget compared to my plan, this is going to analyze the quantity by product line and by product category. And over to the right, we have our output information where it's running a variance analysis. So it's looking at the modeled, modeled scenario versus the plan scenario and what the delta variance is by product category, as well as by individual product SKU. So you can have multiple hierarchies associated with your products. Now, just like I was showing earlier, you can come in here and you can enter data. So if I wanted to change any type of data, this is gonna go to 25, this is gonna be 22, this is gonna be 26, right? You can enter in all that information, hit the save button. This is going to trigger a write back. In addition to writing back the data, it's also writing back an audit trail. So it'll actually indicate the user that made that change, a time and a date, an extended description of what they changed it to and what it was changed from. All of that is instantly added to your reports. Now from, very, from time to time, you may want to create new scenarios and run an analysis based on your inventory levels, your supplier demand levels. All of that can be conducted within the Power BI infrastructure. So here we have an option to create new scenarios by clicking on this we're gonna get a pop-up of two Actaris visuals. The first one is going to be the scenario editor visual or what we call our table edit visual. Lots of use cases for this that you'll see today. And then we have below our copy wizard. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and add a new scenario. I'm gonna call this Mike test. You can name it whatever you would like. You can also add it to a specific category and you can even lock these scenarios so that they're only visible to you. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So now I have added my test to my report as a new scenario. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go back one level and showcase this scenario and how I can go ahead and enter data into that new scenario as well. So notice on the left-hand side, we have budget, plan, and now we have my test in addition to plan adjust, but we can actually toggle to that. So right now we're on the budget as our modeled scenario. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Mike test, which is going to then change. So now here we're looking at Mike test and there's of course no data because we haven't actually indicated to the system what type of data we want to put into this new scenario. Maybe we wanna start from scratch and we wanna go ahead and use the edit functionality and enter in data in multiple ways. You can do top down planning, you can do bottom up planning, which I'll talk about a little bit later or we can click on this button one more time and we can leverage the copy wizard down below, which allows us to copy data from an existing scenario. Very simple to do this. All I have to do is click on this little plus sign here, select the scenario that I wanna copy from. That's the first selection criteria. So this could be I'm copying data from 
my actual scenario, my budget scenario, my plan, my last year's budget, all of those things can be applicable. So I'm gonna take my budget data and I'm gonna go ahead and copy it to my, my test scenario that I just created. Now you can have other conditions that you can add. So maybe you only wanna do this for one product line, for one date range, that's completely up to you. Once I set up those parameters, I can now hit the copy function, which is going to now copy all of the data within the database over to this mic test, which is now has been completed. I can go ahead and hit refresh, which is now going to give me an analysis for Mike's test, showing me all of the details and being able to then compare that against my plan. So being able to create new scenarios, copy data into those scenarios, even leverage AI to predict what the new scenario outcome is going to be. But from there, using human and machine technology, we can say, have the system generate this based on regression as an example. Well, and then from there, we can have users come in and we can edit data. So I want this now to be 50, I want this one to be, you know 45 so we can make all of these adjustments either at the lowest level or we can do this at the highest level as well but let's say that we wanted to do this at the lowest level so here we've changed all of these numbers we're going to actually produce 50 units of this product SKU and 45 units of this product SKU go ahead and hit save this is now going to adjust so monitor this over here where you can see how this automatically changed and our pieces went from 1700 now to roughly 2000, a little over 2000. So being able to leverage the existing technology that you're already familiar with, Power BI being in this case, and then also being able to select, maybe there's different product SKUs that you wanna bring into this report, or maybe you wanna do a different product category, you wanna analyze it that way. These can be inventory levels, these could be stock reorder levels, all that can be built into this Power BI report. Another way of looking at this is seeing, uh, again, by quantity, we can track what our quantity information is. So here we're starting with a blank slate, or we can select our mic test scenario once again, which is gonna feed in all of the data and now show a comparison between my budget and my uh, mic scenario. So budget is what we use to copy into mic, and then we made some minor adjustments, and you can see what those adjustments are. And then full functionality being able to drill down. So if you wanna look at this particular product SKU only, you can see what the total revenues are, what the total number of uh, pieces, and you can then see the information that we've added from April and till December, what those numbers are. And then of course we can make those modifications. So all the functionality that you're used to within Power BI still exists. We're just enhancing that experience by allowing users to enter data, whatever that data may be. And then last but not least, uh, in certain cases, if you're doing what if, you wanna be able to add new product SKUs to a, to a dimension, uh, may not be in reality what's gonna happen, but you wanna be able to simulate if you introduce a new product, what does that look like? And then be able to recalculate what your revenues are based on what you're gonna sell with that new product. And to do that, we are leveraging our table edit visual here. I'm gonna take an existing category underneath uh, our product category here. So, uh, excuse me, an, a, an individual SKU underneath the product category. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy that data. And what we're seeing here is an input template. So I can go ahead and type in um, Mike product. I have this in a group called laptops, product category, and also product subcategory. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I have now just added that new mic product to our data model so what i can then do is i can so there's the mic product here and if i scroll down there's the mic product that we've created here and what we can then do is we can start to add information to this new product and have this create the information and roll this all the way up to the top level so for the mic product, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to sell, or excuse me, I'm going to produce 500 units of this. And I'm going to then sell those, each of those units at a price of $450. So I have a lower product SKU, but 
but I'm going to produce more of this product. So I'm going to go ahead and save both of those. So I'm saving the product quantity of 500 and I'm then saving the price of 450. So this has now been added to the overall data model. All the information is changing and we can click on this toggle, which is going to show us now the output visual for that mic product, which is 225K, which is contributing that much to the overall amount for this month. So complete flexibility around just entering in data directly inside of your business intelligence tool, being able to add new products, being able to change the supply, the demand, the revenue that you're gonna generate from these products, uh, any other information that you wanna be able to track, you can do so within Power BI. So just to, to recap, what we have shown today so far is the ability to enter data directly within Power BI, create new scenarios as we generate new data, copy data into those new scenarios, modify that data, create new product SKUs, all within the matter of a few minutes. What I'm going to jump to next is another report, another Power BI report. So again, just going into edit mode here, you'll notice this is the same exact Power BI infrastructure that you probably are used to today if you leverage Power BI. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into full screen here. And this one is a more, a more comprehensive solution where it's incorporating finance data, HR data, sales data, and operations data all within the same platform. So you can have something so as basic as just revenue analysis, inventory analysis as one module, or you can have a full-blown solution, which is actually calculating a lot of elements to the business and having that downstream impact. When inventory levels change or prices change, this is gonna ultimately change the P&L on the finance side. So having this interconnected modeling is extremely important to bring the business together because you can't make strategic business decisions in a silo. You have to bring all this information and create a collaborative environment for people to contribute the information that they know and then summarize that in a more meaningful way. So this top level report is more of a navigation where we can see financial planning, sales planning, driver-based planning, HR planning, among others. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with driver-based planning and then I'm gonna go right into supply and demand planning. The reason why I like driver-based planning is because there are specific drivers of many businesses that are driving the results of their SNOP models. Here we have an example of all of the different products that we produce and we have them based on product categories. We can narrow this down to a single product SKU or a single product category or all the above. So we can plan and change data at any level. This is one of my favorite visuals that Actaris has developed. This now allows users, instead of entering in data, as I previously demonstrated within the matrix visual, this is allowing me to graphically change data. Here we're looking at our variable or our driver of order quantity. Now there's other drivers of your business I'm sure that you would want to incorporate such as maybe capacity, freight, inventory, quantity, um, unit price. You can set that up within the Power BI infrastructure and then be able to forecast that over a certain period of time. If we take a look at this graph in the dark blue line, that's our actual data from last year. And then the light blue line, that's our budget scenario. So earlier we created a mic scenario. Here we're looking at a traditional budget scenario, but you know how easy it is to create a new scenario if you wanted to start from scratch. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to edit this information visually. So at the moment, we can see that we can produce 19,000 units. But let's say that in January, we're actually not gonna be able to produce as much as we thought. So we're gonna actually bring that down to about a thousand. Notice how that changes. I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, in February, it's gonna pick back up again. So I'm gonna increase that to 5,000. Once again, you'll notice how this changes. So you're visually changing the information based on, the, based on what you know about the business and it's recalculating and comparing that back to your actual scenario from last year, last quarter, even last month. 
Another really cool feature with this visual is this locking mechanism. This is great for uh, capacity planning or even constraint-based planning where you have a limit. Maybe I can only produce 22,000 units across all of my different product SKUs. However, throughout the year, we know that there's gonna be some peaks and valleys. So keep your eye on this data point here, this 5,000. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this other data point down. Notice how that goes up. If I drag this up, notice how that goes down. Because what we're doing is we're proportionally allocating that percent increase or decrease to the remaining periods in that time, still keeping this number static. A lot of our clients will use this to calculate what type of quantity levels that they need to produce based on what they produce for that, that period of time. So if I know that I, I'm not gonna be able to produce you know, anything in January, nothing in February and nothing in March, well, that just means that I need to then produce almost 1800 units in, Feb in April, 5,000 units in May, and it's taking that model into consideration still keeping this number static you can even right click and you can modify these numbers by entering in the data versus visually changing it or you can even lock this specific data point maybe you know that you can only produce up to 5338 units for any given month you can lock that so it doesn't go past that so that gets you into the more of that capacity planning now that's one driver you have other drivers like FX rates, tariffs that again have downstream impacts on overall finance. Or I can go into edit mode simply by clicking on this button here in the bottom right corner. And this is going to produce the matrix visual three separate times. In this case, we're looking at order quantity, sales price, and cost. Those are our three drivers that are being used to calculate our analysis. What I can do is I can leverage this edit button here and I can go ahead and change. So if this product SKU you know, is going to go from 815 to 900, I can make that modification. I'm gonna change the cost of this product. I'm gonna change the quantity that we're able to produce across all of these different product SKUs. So driver-based planning plays an important role in the overall planning process as it relates to supply and demand planning and revenue generation. Uh, just a kind of side note here, if you do have any questions based on anything that I've talked about today, please feel free to include those on the side chat. Normally in a, a presentation, I like to ask questions, but obviously in a live webinar, we unfortunately can't, um, but please feel free to ask those questions and we'll leave some time towards the tail end to make sure that I answer them for you. Next, I would like to go into operational planning. So focusing on supply and demand, uh, looking at it in all kinds of different ways, by territory, by product line, by dates, uh, looking at a, a P&L statement so we can actually track the, the supply, demand, and the profitability by product as well. All of that could be done in one place. So here we have our supply and demand by territory. So what's our demand? What's our supply by the various regions? You can still use your slicers here across the top. These are our filtering mechanisms. If you only want to look at one facility at a time, one organization at a time, one sales manager or multiple across each, you certainly can, as well as different scenarios. So right now we're on the forecast scenario. We're looking at what your supply and demand is uh, for a single product line. And if you wanted to control your supply and demand, once again, this is our visual editor where I can say, well, my demand is actually going to be less for this product SKU or more for this product SKU. So you can modify the demand in this case or the supply, depending on what is important to you. You can modify that in a more visual way at the highest level. So we're doing this at the category level versus the individual SKU level. Down uh, in the bottom right corner, we have supply and demand uh, by general manager. So again, our sales manager. You can also look at by category how what what their balance is, the optimization of what their supply and demand is, or what their loss opportunity, and what the delta or percent or waterfall variance is based on each product category. And then over here on the left, we're tracking our supply and demand and the, doing a 
gap analysis between the two. So we can easily find out where we are and what the variances are between our supply and demand curve and ultimately tracking the total supply that we can produce and the total demand allocated to that supply across all the different product SKUs that we have. So this is the, a huge benefit of a business intelligence tool is that it can bring the data to life in any way, shape, or form. It's tailored to your business. It's not you're forced into, a, it's not like a square peg round hole kind of situation. You're not forced into the UI of an application and you have to adhere to their structure. What's great about our technology is that it's completely flexible. It can accommodate all kinds of different use cases. So earlier we were talking about revenue analysis. Now we're talking about supply and demand analysis. All of those things can be brought together. And you can add additional driver mechanisms to that. So really great analytical engine. And then also being able to go into edit mode here. And if we wanted to, we can optimize for margin, we can optimize for demand using AI uh, algorithms that we have pre-built for organizations. Uh, in this case, what we can do here is we can look at what our product demand is and what our product supply is. We can look at that by region, total demand pieces, by territory, which we can then use this drop-down mechanism and say, well, we don't wanna look at the US anymore, we may wanna look at Australia. So it's going to then filter. So for Australia, we're going to produce, or excuse me, this is demand. So the demand in Australia is going to be 1,900, almost 2,000 units. Uh, maybe we want to look at uh, Australia and Canada together. So we can go ahead and add those two. So we're now at about 6,000. And now we want to do all of them. So I can select everything. Now we're at 43,000 units. And then we can do the same thing down below with our supply. So we're tracking both demand and supply all in one place, still being able to modify that data in any way, shape, or form. So here we can go into edit mode and we can say for our sport category, product category, the demand is actually going to increase, let's say by 10%, that's where you'll use that I 10% function, or down below the supply is actually going to increase because we opened up a new manufacturing facility and we wanna be able to increase our supply based on that. So a lot of flexibility with just modifying data, we also have this ability to generate workflow. So as people are entering in information, you may want other people to approve the data that's been entered. And that's where workflow comes into play. Now, Power BI standard, you're not able to change data, which is important in the workflow process. You can display the workflow, like this particular organization is still in progress with their supply and demand planning. And they've also added some, some commentary. But what we can do is we can now modify this. So as we go through our analysis, we've entered in all of our data based on the demand of this product, based on this region or this organization. This organization here is now going to modify using the table edit visual, the Actaris table edit visual. And it's going to go ahead and mark this as submitted. As soon as I hit save, this is going to then trigger an email or Teams notification to the respectable person, let's say my manager. He or she will come in, they'll analyze the data, see if everything looks great. Again, we're, everyone's working off the same information. So you can share this with anyone or they can log in uh, to the same report and see the same information as long as they have rights to do so. He or she can then analyze, maybe provide some commentary, adjustments, either top level or bottom level adjustments. They can then come in and hit the approve button. Once again, hit save, and this will automatically lock down that forecast for that time period and for just that scenario. That doesn't mean you can't create more scenarios, which leads us to the, the last uh, page on this screen, which is the ability to create brand new scenarios for your supply and demand, and then be able to copy that data over. So we demonstrated this earlier, it's the same exact visuals. In this case, we're just looking at um, a different report. But what we can do is we can create a new scenario by clicking on this little plus sign here. So adding a new row. Here's where you can add it to a specific group. So maybe you have all of your demand forecasts, all of your supply forecasts organized in different groups. If you have separate teams working on that, you can, you can lock this. So maybe it's only visible for yourself and nobody else. But you can add that information and then use the copy wizard to copy data as a baseline or to leverage algorithms, which is then again, optimizing the data for you uh, automatically. And then that's as a good starting point. So lots of flexibility that we have with these reports. 
We can even get into um, CapEx planning. So for your demand and your, for your supply, like I said earlier, maybe you want to open up a new manufacturing facility or you anticipate that you're going to be opening up a manufacturing facility and you want to be able to see the downstream impact this is going to have on your supply. And, and how does that match with your demand? Does it make sense to open up a manufacturing facility that produces 10,000 more units? Does the demand meet the supply that we're gonna be able to produce with this manufacturing facility? But what's great about Power BI is that we can display this information. What are our total assets? What's the depreciation associated with all of these different assets? What type of assets uh, in more detail down below? and what the purchase value was, what the useful life is, what the depreciation per month is, all of these different metrics. But what we can do is we can go into edit mode now, which is gonna allow me to enter in that new manufacturing facility that we may be engaging in over the next uh, couple of years. So here we have our table edit visual, which is gonna represent all of the different assets and asset types, which you can categorize. If we wanted to create a new asset or like a new manufacturing facility, we can specify that here and all the information associated with that. So it can then run that cascading effect where it's calculating the depreciation, which is what finance wants to know. It's also going to indicate what your salvage value is. You can have alert mechanisms based on salvage value, your useful life, what the purchase date is. All of that could be entered into Power BI and affecting all of your output visuals that you have in one place. So extremely powerful. And last but not least, we have a screen for master data management. This is a great screen for entering in of new products. So we saw that earlier when we entered in that mic product in the previous uh, screen. But this case, we have a lot more data that we can enter for our products. We can see we have the product names, we have the standard cost, the color, the stock relevel, the reorder point, we have the list price, and any other information that you would like to include. There's also validation logic built into some of these columns, like for example, the product line. If this product no longer is going to belong to the mountain product line, it's actually going to belong to the road product line. You can see that you have these drop down menus within Power BI that you can select as you're changing the data. And upon saving this, this will reallocate this this uh, product skew to a new product category which will ultimately change all of your output visuals that are representing this information as i scroll over we can have pictures of products we can have descriptions of products we can also link to maybe a product catalog or to a source system internally to represent additional information related to this product all kinds of information that you can now include in one place. Taking this one step further, what's great about Microsoft is that they make all of their products work together. So today we spent a majority of our time in Power BI, which is great, but this also allows us to go in, let's say that I'm going to go back to our first example, that revenue analysis. I'm going to go ahead and take a copy of this, go back into my PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to insert a new slide here. And I'm going to then add this Power BI report directly into my PowerPoint presentation. Now, this is a great feature. Let me just make this bigger for everyone. And let me insert that. This is a great feature because we have use cases where we're going into meetings with individuals and we want to be able to change things on the fly as we're in those meetings so instead of writing down on a piece of paper or typing in uh, on our notes on our laptop we want to be able to actually just input and see the downstream impact that that input has on the over uh, overarching model so here we have the same exact report that we were looking at earlier let me just go ahead and make this full screen there we go so this is just that same power bi report but we're actually in PowerPoint. So if someone in the meeting says, well, what if we create a new product category or that mic product that we created, it no longer exists. So we wanna actually delete that. Okay, well, if as long as you have rights to do so, we can go ahead and delete those different product categories. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete a few of them, uh, ones that have already been entered in. So we've gotten deleted and now they have 
vacated our report. So you can see that our revenue now went from 500 down to 265 because we deleted the line item we created earlier, which was that mic product. We can come in and we can enter additional data. So for example, we can toggle here and now we're looking at the quantity and the unit price for each of our different products. Again, this could be supply and demand as well. We can then change this. So for example, here, we wanna go ahead and update this from 20, we wanna increase this by you know, 40%. We wanna decrease this by 25%. So it's recalculating those numbers. I can go ahead and hit save. Just to emphasize the true power of this, this is all being done in PowerPoint. Right? So if I just hit the exit button now, you'll see that it's still saving. There we go, we've, we've saved everything, but this is now being done directly in PowerPoint. So I could have done this entire presentation in PowerPoint if I wanted to. I could have also leveraged Teams. All of this can be done in Teams and Teams is a great collaborative tool for everyone. And then last but not least, being able to open up an Excel template. Just a blank Excel workbook. Actaris has our own Excel online tool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna log in using our Office 365 account. So it's not a different username or a different password for Actaris. This is leveraging your Microsoft uh, Active Directory. So all the rights that persist for that user will cascade into Actaris as well. We're not about reinventing the wheel. There's already great tools out there. We're just here to enhance the user experience of these existing tools. So I'm logging in. And what I'm doing is I'm logging into the database where all this information is stored. I'm using Excel as the front end tool to bring the data to life. The data still sits inside of a structured database because you want everyone working off that single source of truth. Now what I can do is I can say, okay, I wanna bring in a list of my products. So we have a dimension called products. I can now load that into my Excel template. This is the same exact screen that you saw within Power BI. That was that master data management screen. Let me actually just quickly go back to that. That's this screen right here. Scroll over. First item here is the cup shaped race. We have a standard cost of 10 and the color of black. Cup shaped race, standard cost of 10, color is black. Now as a user, you can start to adjust this information. Um, again, you're not changing actual data, just wanna make sure that I preface that, but let's say the standard cost actually is gonna be 12, the uh, safety stock level is instead of 1,000 or instead of 900, it's gonna be 1,000, the reorder point now is gonna be 5,000, the list price is gonna to increase to 10. You'll notice how the system is marking these in red because it's indicating that there's actually a change on, the, on these columns within this row. What we can do now is we can go ahead and commit those changes. So what it's doing is it's writing that data back to the database. So it's indicating that now as turning everything black. So it's a committed. And now everyone that pulls up the same report or the same dimension, either in Power BI, in PowerPoint, in Teams, or in Excel, is going to see all of these changes. And to show that in real time, if I go back into my Power BI report, hit refresh, notice how the standard cost the stock level and the reorder point, all of these will update to the, the value. Um, there we go, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. There you go, 5,000, 1,000, and 12. So it's making sure that everyone is, is leveraging the same data, which helps with collaboration and also helps push forward the business and help prepare for the future. And it's all using tools that people are familiar with. So Power BI, Excel being the two most common. And you can do all kinds of things that we won't be able to cover today. Like for example, if I wanted to add a new product, I can go down to the bottom of this list and say, you know what? It's gonna actually be, all of this information is the exact same. I'm gonna copy that down one row. As you can see here, it's turned this in red and then we can fill in other data points as needed. So being able to create new products or change inventory levels within existing products. So all the things that we've talked about within Power BI can now cascade into Excel, but we're using Excel as is intended. Excel was never intended to be a data storage facility. That's why we have a lot of problems with Excel, especially with mass amounts of data. 
what we're doing is we're saying continue to use Excel and all the experience that you have with Excel, but put all this information in a structured database, which is what Actaris helps you with, model that data so we're connecting it across the organization and then bringing that to life using these front end tools. Now, the last thing that I wanna um, point out is just more of a visual representation of what we talked about today, to put this into perspective. Here we have an example of what we're doing kind of behind the scenes. Over on the left-hand side, you'll notice we have, we have all these different source systems that we need to connect to. These could be proprietary databases, these could be uh, pointed SaaS solutions that you're leveraging internally, like a CRM, um, a ERP system. So we take all of these systems and we integrate that information into that single source of truth. That's the database that we're writing back to. And that's what you see here, this write back technology that's built inside of Power BI and Excel, allowing users and planners to interact with this data and ultimately write that data back and instantly see that within their data analysis engine. So lots of capabilities that uh, we've talked about today. Just as a recap, um, being able to change data within Power BI and Excel, have that data update in real time so we can see the analysis related to those changes. You can model any type of information. It doesn't have to just be supply and demand, although that's been the main topic today. This could be financial data, this could be HR data, this could be sales data. At the end of the day, Power BI doesn't care what it's displaying. We're telling the Power BI what to display. Now you just entered into a new world where you can actually perform data entry within Power BI and see the endless opportunities that you have to collect information, consolidate that information, report on that information, and ultimately make impactful decisions or take action on that information. I think that's the last mile that uh, Power BI doesn't help you with is it, it can present it in a meaningful way, but what the, the next question in your mind is, so what? What do I do with this information? That's where the actionability comes into play. And the only way to be able to action on data is to be able to interact with it in real time. And that's what Actaris does for businesses. So I hope you found today's session helpful. And ultimately, um, maybe there's different ways that we could work together by taking this technology and implanting it into your existing infrastructure. So I do want to take a moment to thank everyone for their time today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to uh, so you could use um, sales at actaris.com. I think we have a slide. Let me just go to that here at the end. There we go. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us depending on where you're located within the world. We have a lot of different videos on YouTube that you can access. Uh, this recording will also be uploaded to YouTube. You can start a free trial as well. So if you're actually intrigued with what you saw today and you wanna be able to incorporate your own data into the solution, feel free to reach out to us. Happy to start a free trial and, and create that. We can do it relatively quickly. So thank you so much for your time today and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you.